Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us in what is now our third virtual information session. We had one on college, we had one on academics, and uh, now we're trying to touch base on end of year procedures. And we had such an overwhelming uh, response and participation in our first info session with principals. We brought back three new principals to talk today. Um, my name is Eric Patton, Chief Communications Officer, and along with our three principals, we have a great panel uh, tonight to answer questions from a variety of areas and campuses. Um, but before we get into all of the people joining us, I wanted to introduce Associate Superintendent Kim Brienza, um, who is going to kick things off for us. So, Mr. Brienza, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Patton. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening for our third virtual Facebook Live event. Very exciting. Our goal is to be informative and transparent in our work and messaging this evening, as always. The safety of our students, our staff, our community is paramount as we prepare every student for college, career, and community. We have an esteemed panel of guests tonight of hardworking professionals that will be helping answer some questions. We have another group who will be answering some comments on Facebook, but to help answer or to help introduce our panel, I'll turn it back over to you, Eric. All right. So uh, getting started with our introductions, we are uh, going to begin with our assistant principals. And so, Miss Anaya, could you introduce yourself and we'll work our way around the room virtually and let everybody know where campuses are represented and uh, who these faces are that are going to be sharing information with you tonight. Good evening, everyone. I am Leticia Anaya. I'm the assistant principal at San Luis High School. And uh, hello, I'm uh, David King, Assistant Principal and Athletic Director at Kofa High School. Hey everybody, I'm Joe Daly. I'm actually a PE teacher at Gila Ridge High School. Good evening everyone. Uh, Derek Bosch, Principal, Cibola High School. Go Raiders. Hi there, I'm Brett Sergan. I'm the Principal at Vista High School. Good evening. I'm Bob Chenard. I'm the principal of Yuma High School. Thank you, everybody. And uh, without further ado, we're going to get to our questions. I just wanted to uh, set it up real quick for everyone. We had uh, solicited questions in advance, uh, so we have a lot of those questions that we're going to be getting to. But please feel free to ask questions in the uh, comment section of Facebook Live. Uh, we will also take a look at those and. Uh, some of those questions answered for you as well um, and we will uh, get started in the area of academics just following up on some new questions or some that we didn't get to last time uh, the first one comes from gerald at gila ridge and his question is gpa is very important to our son his final gpa will have an enormous impact on pending scholarships and opportunities he has done all the work required of him remotely during the pandemic how grading procedures utilized subsequent to the physical shutdown of the school differ from those utilized prior to the shutdown. If pass fail is implemented, how will achieving pass on all remaining courses affect his GPA as it existed prior to the change? So uh, do we have somebody that wants to take on the answer to Gerald's question? I'll go ahead and jump on that. I. Uh... Again, I'm Joe Daly. I'm a PE teacher at Gila Ridge. So being a Gila Ridge parent asking this question, this is a very good question. Um, first of all, I think the most important thing that our students need to do across the district is just communicate with our teachers. They're, we're sitting back at home. We're, we're waiting for you guys to email, contact us. We're willing to help. Um, so that would be my first way. It, it communicate to your, parent, your teacher to see, hey, what grade do I have? What can I do to get my grade up? Um, one thing about grade is they will not get any worse. They can only get better. So that's another important factor to play with that. Uh, they will be letter grade based, A, B, C, D, F um, grades. So that's kind of big at, at the end of the year when they, when we're posting. And the most, and the next most important thing is teachers were, are giving grace over grades right now. We're, we're trying to do everything we can to bring kids grades up, another letter grade, two letter grades, anything we can. So um, that's the important factor there. And I'll kind of piggyback on that from what Mr. Daly said. Uh, he did a good job of, of summarizing that. When, when the school closure occurred, 
we really tried to implement a standards-based approach where we identified the standards that students had not yet met. Um, and from there, we utilize Canvas as our primary platform for teachers to give that descriptive feedback going from the date of the school closure until the end of the year. We have updated grades um, within the last week. Grades were updated in Synergy and there will be a final grade updated in Synergy. And like Mr. Daly said, uh, those grades are, they're not pass fail, they will be letter grades. So that part of it has not changed. But like Mr. Daly said, just do your best to communicate and use those office hours to talk with your teacher if you have any questions about grades. Thank you, Mr. Daly and Mr. Bosch. Uh, the next question that was sent in advance also had to do with uh, grades and academics. Um, and it comes from Martinez at Yuma High School. And the question is, assignments completed prior to March 13th have not been entered in the grade book in some cases. Why are teachers holding off on posting these grades? Well, I'll take that. Bob Chenard here, uh, principal Yuma High School. Um, kind of piggyback on what Mr. Bosch and uh, Mr. Daly said, it's all about communicating, communicating, communicating. So if, uh, if a parent is uh, concerned about a student's grades, please reach out to the teacher and uh, email the teacher. And if you feel like you still have some questions or concerns or your question didn't get answered or the, or the teacher didn't get back to you, please feel free to email the principal or a counselor or even the uh, assistant principal of academics so that we could follow up with the teacher to make sure that your, your question regarding grading is answered. Thank you, Mr. Shai. Um, we're gonna get to our first Facebook Live question. Um, and we had a, a question just a moment ago regarding the bookstore. Um, and the question was, they've attempted to reach the bookstore and the bookstore is closed. Um, on their campus. I'm not sure which campus, but that they were saying the bookstore is closed and they wanted advice on what to do in the case they needed to contact the bookstore. Um, is that something that you could answer for us, Mr. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our bookstores are, are available each day. Um, if you're having a hard time getting a hold of the bookstore, uh, reach out to your campus, um, any one of our administrative assistants. Uh, can help you and, and take a message and get that message to the bookstore. Um, you know, but we've got some schedules for returning netbooks, returning other things uh, that are all available on our, our district website as well. Uh, but definitely contact your campus and, and we'll get you in touch with them. Thank you, Mr. King. So we're going to get back to our questions in advance. Uh, this one comes from Chris at Cibola High School. And the question is, how do I get my login and password for parent view? Take this question. Um, and I, I, we we get this question a lot, and we we love it, and it's an easy one to fix. Um, call your campus. So for for Chris, um, call Cibola, and they'll be able to help you out right away. But basically, you know, once you get your letter on activating your Parent View um, account, you have only a certain amount of days to to get it set up. And so if you if you haven't activated your Parent View account. Um, we can get you a new a new activation key um, sent over to to your email address. Um, and then if you have forgotten your password or forgotten what email you used or username, um, in Parent View you can click on Forgot Password and and get a get a reset password email sent to your email address. And if you don't know the email address you used, you can again call your campus and we can look up that information for you and and get it to you right away. Thank you, Mr. Sergei. Uh, moving to the next uh, question in this area. Uh, it's from, oh, I don't have the name of the person that it's from, but we'll still ask it. It says, my child failed classes last semester and I was told before all this happened, uh, he needs to go to summer school in order to get credit. Are there still going, is there still going to be summer school online? and answer that Mr. Patton. Um, at this time all campuses have plans for extended summer learning uh, for seniors specifically. So um, you can always contact your son or daughter's uh, school for the specific plans that are in place at each of the campuses. And in the case that your child is not a senior, um, well uh, the, the campus can also provide that information about possible opportunities 
for them to be able to make up uh, any failed classes within the next school year. So, you know, that's our recommendation. If you have specific questions, just go ahead and please contact the school. And thank you, Ms. Anaya. I think that's generally one of the things that uh, you'll hear a lot tonight is uh, our principals are available, our assistant principals are available, their, their assistants are. Um, if you're having uh, issues or concerns with things, the best course of action really is to uh, get in touch with the school and they're going to do everything they can to provide the best answer um, and give you that information as quickly as possible. Um, whether it's summer school uh, or, or other things. Um, moving on, we had a question in the Facebook uh, comments and one of those is from Tiffany. And she asks if there will be any sort of bridge to the ridge for incoming freshmen or any other kind of freshman orientations. Do I have uh, anyone who's uh, willing to jump in and give it a quick answer? I know we touched on that slightly for uh, uh, in our last session, but if someone could reiterate that for us today. Uh, I guess I could jump in. I, I don't know about Bridge to the Ridge specifically, but I do know that uh, orientation uh, programs and things like that are, are currently, um, I guess for lack of a better term, on hold until we kind of know. We're, right now we're navigating through getting through this year and just trying to forward think as much as possible. But with the ever-changing climate, you know, things change so quickly. Um, we we are optimistic that all those things will eventually take place for our incoming kids. It's just that now we don't have a definite plan for them. Thank you, Mr. Bosch. Uh, that is a, is a really good segue, in fact, to our, our next topic area in which we got questions in advance. Um, and this is regarding the 2020-21 school year. Um, there were several questions in this area uh, and to summarize them, uh, Jen from Healy Ridge was asking about when will classes resume um, in August uh, and, and about uh, sports and when those will take place. And then we also had Nicole from Healy Ridge ask what, about specific contingency plans that the schools are preparing for this fall, whether the governor allows students to return to class physically or not. And if physically, how does the school, how did the schools plan to achieve proper social distancing um, and if classes are online, are teachers going to be teaching online in live classes? So uh, is there someone that can take that for us? Eric, I can, I can take those or um, work through them. Sounds like there's two or three there. Um, let me start off with, I think the first one will, um, school is scheduled to start uh, August 6th. That calendar is approved and it's, it's on our website. So we hope to have our students back in class on August 6th. With regards to sports, um, we're gonna have to take a lot of guidance from the Yuma County Health Department, the Governor's Office, Center for Disease Control, and Arizona Interscholastic Association. The AIA is what governs athletics for the um, state of Arizona. And they will be making a decision, letting us know what sports will be held, when they will be held, if they're gonna be pushed back, if they're gonna start on time. So, Unknown with regards to sports because the AIA actually uh, ceased all athletic activities um, back in March. So we're still waiting for guidance from them in that respect. With regards to um, starting early, we still plan to start on August 6th. But I think going to the more I think, complex question is we do have tentative plans. We've discussed numerous options as a district and on campus level with the district just impossible to predict the nature and the future of this virus um, in our, for the public health situation in July or August. Um, a lot of things have changed just since March. So the Arizona Department of Education just started a task force, created it May 1st, and that's led by the state superintendent. And you have membership from the governor's office, for example, on that task force, and they're gonna provide guidance and a roadmap for all schools in order, so in order for everyone to safely um, come up with contingencies and plans for the 2021 school year. Obviously, we'll look for them for guidance and advice on social distancing practices in classrooms. Um, once again, they, it started May 1st. It's only two weeks into their initial um, foray of analyzing everything. But with regards to what classes may look like, um, if we are doing a digital format, I just want to say I am so very proud 
of our students, our staff, our community, what we've been able to achieve since March 13th. Um, just for example, in the digital area, um, we've had 15,000 virtual meetings, Google meetings, just since March 13th. So in about two months, month and a half, we've had our students and our staff meeting 15 different times with numerous students in each of those meetings digitally learning. So will, will um, students be attending virtually or in person? We're, we're waiting for guidance from the governor's office. We've talked about different contingency plans, but I just gotta say, I'm so proud of what we have in place just in the last two months and how hard our teachers, our students, and the support of our community has made just to make it so we're at this point where we have kids graduating on Friday night, um, hopefully, uh, with virtual ceremonies being released next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So lots to be proud of, but we just don't know what the virus is going to um, allow us to do in August. I think I got all the answers to those questions. I think you did. Uh, there was one follow-up question from Juan at COFA. And he was just asking if there are any plans to start early. I know you addressed uh, August 6th as the start date and, and uh, some schools around the country are starting potentially a little earlier. Is that something that's been considered for YUHSD? You know, we've looked at all sorts of options, um, tentative plans, but for right now, August 6th is our start date. I, I think um, just what, what's out there, we need to wait for um, guidance from the state superintendent Hoffman and the governor's office on their task force on what's what what's the best case. Thank you, Mr. Brianza. Um, moving into another area, uh, it's an area that's already come up several times in the uh, comments, but we knew we had some questions in advance on this, uh, and we will get to it right now. Um, this is regarding some equipment and return uh, pickup things. The first one is when and where are netbooks going to be returned? And that comes from Shannon, Dallin, and Jessica at Gila Ridge. I'll take that one, Mr. Patton. Um, that's a great question because it's very important that all of our students uh, return their netbooks. Um, and for them to know that they will be issued the same netbook uh, the following school year, but it's important that they return them so that we can refresh those uh, Chromebooks, the software within them, and then provide the necessary security and, and updates that are necessary for the software. So um, the plan um, is, is for the netbook returns um, is going to follow a district uh, schedule that is, going to, that is actually posted on the yumaunion.org website. Um, and this schedule is as follows and begins on Monday, this upcoming Monday, May 18th through Thursday, May 21st from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. with time slots for each cohort. So seniors would be turning in their netbooks on Monday, juniors on Tuesday, sophomores on Wednesday, and freshmen on Thursday. And again, this is posted to our district website and it will contain the full schedule and location for each campus. Um, and if you need um, specific information or have questions, again, you know, we invite you to you know, give us a call, but check that website out first. Thank you, Ms. Anaya. And we had a, a follow-up question in the uh, comments on Facebook as well. Uh, and I thought I'd end it, but I think I found it. All right. And it's coming from Renee. She says she's a freshman at Gila Ridge and is currently taking AP World History. And her question is, their AP test is 11 a.m. on May 21st, which is the day they're asked to turn in their computers. Can there be an exception for AP students? Um, or will the time be changed? How, how will that work for students that need their computer for some later testing that week? Absolutely, um, they can go ahead and um, just, you know, let uh, their teachers know they're gonna hold on to their devices and, and yes, um, we can make arrangements. Um, so just have her contact uh, the campus um, specifically to figure out what those arrangements would be. And it looks like Megan asked something about that as well um, on in the Facebook comments. So. Would you suggest, Ms. Anaya, or anybody else that would like to weigh in, would you suggest that the students that are involved in those AP tests or need the computer for academic work next week, uh, that they contact through their teacher or should they contact a principal? Who, who would you work through uh, if you were a student? 
Uh, this is Bob Chouinard at Yuma High School. Um, I think it would be um, beneficial to work through their teacher, and then the teacher can work with administration to make sure that those netbooks get returned. Thank you, Mr. Chouinard. And Mr. King, I've got a Facebook question for you specifically. Uh, it's saying that the COFA bus a return says use the bus lane. Uh, can you be more specific on the bus lane entrance for Megan? Yeah, absolutely. Our bus lane entrance is off of 32nd or off of 32nd Street. Uh, it's the gate uh, down past um, the district office. Uh, we'll come into that bus lane, come back and around to the north parking lot. Uh, it's covered with some solar panels, um, and we're putting it back there because that's the best place for us to uh, to keep everyone and and all the devices in the shade. So, uh, there should be some signs there as well to guide us on the day of. And so that is not the roundabout near the park. We're talking about the entrance on the other side of uh, past Vista High School on 32nd Street, correct? That's right. And that'll take us back to behind building two in the north side of the school. Thank you. All right. So uh, the next question is regarding picking up clothes from lockers. And this comes from Shannon at Gila Ridge and Heather at Cibola. And the question is, when can students pick up clothes from their lockers? I can take that one, Eric. Um, we've got scheduled dates uh, that started yesterday. Um, they're, they're going through this week with makeup dates uh, this Friday, as, uh, as well as through next week. Uh, the best place to find that information about that schedule is on our YOHSD website. Uh, it's this, I think it's the second article on the website. Um, sure. When you're looking at that schedule, just make sure that you guys are all following uh, as many protocols for social distancing as you can. Uh, stay in your vehicle. Every campus is, has protocols in place to keep people in their vehicle, to keep them safe. Uh, and follow directions. Uh, each school has planned routes and procedures for the event. And, and I think most schools have maps linked uh, right there on the website. Uh, if you're unable to make your time, that's all right. Uh, we'll, we'll take equipment when you can bring it. Uh, but please try to stick to those schedules as much as possible uh, so that we can keep people uh, keep lines short and and keep that social distancing uh, at its best and mr king that's broken up by cohort correctly so if i'm a, a junior i'm going to come on a certain day if i'm a sophomore i'm going to come on a certain day is that how it's working right for locker cleanout uh, we started with seniors yesterday um, and then throughout the rest of this week, uh, we're moving our way into freshmen since uh, we have more freshmen in the locker rooms for PE than any other cohort. Thank you. All right, so the next question um, along the same lines, um, not just about lockers, but uh, Jessica from Gila Ridge wants to know, how do we pick up projects and supplies from ceramics? Take that one too, Eric. Um, that set schedules on the same uh, same link uh, on our website as the locker room cleanout and equipment cleanout. Uh, all of our fine arts department have scheduled days. Uh, I believe band started yesterday and today, uh, and continues throughout this week. Uh, ceramics and other art classes uh, are later this week. Um, every again, every single uh, campus has their own route and map for that. Um, please stay in your vehicles. Um, Bring, his, bring your supplies with you and, and we'll do our best to collect them, and, but also to hand out your, uh, your ceramics or your art projects. Uh, our art teachers are really, really happy to get those back to you uh, as, as special as they are. Uh, and that should be all through this week. Excellent, thank you, Mr. King. Um, moving on to uh, another question about notebook returns. This one comes from Virginia at Gila Ridge. And her question is, can we pay for screen damage to our netbook on collection day? I'll take that one also, Mr. Patton, since um, I already explained uh, the previous ones. So um, the answer to that question is, unfortunately, we cannot, um, we don't have that option available for um, students or parents to pay on the same day as uh, they um, dropped off their um, devices. Um, however, um, the, the fees for these, the screen damage or other damages um, are going to be assessed, and then uh, the equipment uh, is going to be, it's going to be um, looked at, and they will be processing this information through the summer and posting um, these fees to the student account. So once these fees are posted, then they are payable through the web store. 
um, as far as seniors go. Um, however, uh, we will be working to have all fees assessed by the close of business uh, on Tuesday, May 19th. Fantastic. Thank you, Ms. Anaya. And if I could ask a follow-up question from Mega, Megan on Facebook Live. Um, she was asking if, if you're a family with uh, students who are in multiple grades, um, is it acceptable to return all of those students' netbook materials uh, on the same day or would they have to come on multiple days? Um, absolutely. We will take them um, all at once. Thank you. Short and sweet. Perfect. <laughs> um, Moving to our next question. Um, this one's regarding refunds and it comes from multiple people um, in our advanced questions. And uh, long and the short of it is what is going on with refunds? So we're talking about class fees, sports, prom, uh, all that kind of stuff. What, what's going on with refunds? I'll take that one, Mr. Patton. Uh, this is Bob Chenard from Yuma High School. Um, first, I'd like to start off by saying we appreciate everybody's patience and understanding while we're putting systems in place to address refunds. Um, that being said, sports and prom refunds are currently being processed. And um, we are currently in the process of evaluating and assessing all student accounts. And we're starting with the seniors working through the entire student body. So um, we'll, we'll be publishing more information pertaining to fees as it becomes available to us um, before the end of the school year. Thank you, Mr. Shamash. And uh, a follow-up to the uh, refund question uh, we had from Bernice at Cibola, and that question was, when will we, we be allowed to receive our cookie dough from Trax fundraiser? I know that involves quite a few people at multiple campuses, not just Cibola. Hi, Mr. Patton. I'll take that one, Mr. Bosch from Cibola. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, when the school closure occurred, we were in the midst of collecting cookie dough and getting that distributed to the people that were nice enough to to donate to the track program, specifically at Cibola. Uh, but with social distancing and keeping people safe, we were in a position where we just could not get students to get the cookie dough and get it distributed. Um, so we currently have that being stored and it is it's waiting. And when things are maybe lifted and become a little more flexible, our plan is to distribute that cookie dough to whoever purchased it. So um, our coaches and our athletes are being informed of that as well. So we're, we're just kind of waiting, but it is there. It hasn't, been, it hasn't been forgotten. So good question and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bosch. Um, and we have another follow-up on Facebook Live regarding item pickup. So maybe Mr. King or Ms. Anaya could jump in on this one. Um, they're asking about classes that are not fine arts, CTE, or sports. Um, if there was something left behind in class, the, some of their belongings, and they need to pick it up, um, how can they uh, do that? And that comes from Angel on Facebook Live. Well, I can speak um, uh, to our campus specifically. Um, students um, have been contacting their teachers, and we have started with that approach and then move forward um, with that individually. So Mr. King, would you like to add anything else or anyone else want to add to that? Yeah, I think that's your, your best bet. Contact your teacher if you have a, an item in a classroom or with the teacher or a project. Uh, we have some, some procedures in place where we can, uh, if you call your, your school and, and register to come and, and be on campus, uh, that, that's the best way to get what you need. Thank you. Uh, another Facebook Live question from Jules um, is regarding her daughter was one of five seniors uh, that was supposed to test for health aid certification and she wanted some more information on when that might happen. Is there a, a principal that could take that one for us? Uh, I can address that, Eric. Um, I guess I would just want to know specifically uh, the details and, and the timeline. So all I could say to that question is is to call at the call us at the school and and speak to me specifically regarding that assessment, or speak to our um, academics assistant principal, and we can answer any testing question, not just that one um, relating to the that test, but with ACT or any standardized testing, AP testing. Those are all questions that we would love to hear about. We have been seeing uh, quite a few of those test questions, um, not just tonight, but on our Facebook uh, uh, 
comments in general for different posts. So that that would be the recommendation, like we mentioned earlier, is you know get in touch with your your school. In this case, specifically your academic principal or your building principal would be the first step, I think, in in finding out about that. Thank you, Mr. Bosch. Um, another netbook question from Jenny. Uh, she's referring to uh, damage or things that are broken on the netbook, like keys or things like that. Um, is that something that has to be paid for, or will will you get charged? for damage like that. Um, I, I can answer that one. Um, yes, the netbooks will be assessed um, and damages will be um, um, also put up on the on the uh, web on the student's account. So yes, just like any other time, um, those damages would be looked at and um, um, assessed a fee um, as needed. Thank you, Ms. Anaya. And we've also had a lot of questions, um, and I'm not going to, I apologize for not uh, naming specific person, but I have seen multiple questions regarding how the virtual graduation will work or what will that look like. Um, I can provide some uh, general information on that. And if, uh, if our principal, if, if Mr. Guy and Mr. Chenard, if you guys want to jump in and piggyback on my uh, first answer, that would be helpful as well. Um, but for virtual recognition ceremonies, uh, they begin next week on Monday with Vista High School at five. Um, it will be posted on Facebook. It will be hosted as a premiere, so it'll be kind of like a watch party that you can watch with uh, others. Um, but the video will also be um, something that is archived on there that you can access at any time. So if you aren't able to watch it at 5 p.m., in this case for Vista, or if you're not able to watch the others that begin at seven o'clock each night they're following, um, you would be able to see it after the fact. Um, at that same time, it will be put on our YouTube pages as well as our campus and district websites. Um, one of the, the, the things, if you are going to watch it after the fact, um, you know, say the following week or something like that, you would be able to access one page with all six of the virtual recognition ceremonies in one place. But really the hope is that the community will gather together and watch um, in during that that watch party on the night of your school's um, recognition ceremony and then you can you know comment together and and applaud as your seniors are recognized throughout um, and if uh, anybody else would like to, to add on maybe what the content of in some ways will look like or uh, anything else that would be great Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in. Um, so we, we were hoping to create uh, something that was memorable and something that recognizes uh, each of our seniors. Um, and um, you know, the the format really is we we have we do have some speeches just as a traditional uh, ceremony would have um, speeches from a number of our students who are recognized are are representing their class, um, and some of those messages are really positive. And um, it, I'm really proud of the of the ceremony that that Vista has has put together, and I'm sure the other campuses are as well. And we look forward to to having those. But each student is recognized. Each student's name is is spoken aloud as it would be in a in a ceremony, um, a traditional ceremony. Each student is um, you know recognized with a picture as well. And uh, we we think it's uh, while it's not the same, um, we we think we've created something that. Uh, We'll, we'll be there forever and uh, that that a family can gather around and, and watch and, and and remember their senior year and and feel proud of what they've done. Thank you. So, and I'll just say one more thing. Um, and this was mentioned in the uh, the last Facebook Live um, meeting as well, which is the vir the virtual recognition does not replace a traditional ceremony and and for the seniors, our heart goes out to our seniors, but this is also like Mr. Sergine said, this is a special moment for a lot of our seniors as well. And the fact that, um, you know, they're, Trailblazers, they're kind of, they're the first ones to, to do this and, and we're just happy and we're, we're proud of the work that has gone into this uh, virtual recognition um, ceremony. So it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be good. We've, we've put a lot of, of good work into it and we're proud of our seniors and we're, we're glad that we can recognize them the way, we, the way that we are, although it 
we know that it doesn't replace the tradition. So. Thank you, Mr. Bosch. Um, I have another question from Norma, um, shifting gears a little bit on Facebook. Live. She asks, when are assignments and grades due for COFA? Um, I think that we could expand that out and just in general. Uh, can you guys, so can somebody please share when grade books will be closing for our classes? I, I can take that question again. Um, and if anybody wants to elaborate on it. So our, our seniors, we are posting grades for, for seniors on May 18th. Um, that is the deadline for them. And then for all other students, we are posting grades on May 21st and they'll be made uh, public May 22nd. So we, the reason we post in advance for our seniors is that we wanna, we wanna make sure that uh, they meet the requirements and we can get a jump start on anything um, that week for our seniors specifically. So I hope that answered that question. Yes. And uh, back to our, our graduation conversation, it's interesting and, and one we haven't heard yet from Allison. Um, future reference for scholarships, applications, things like that, that, someone's filling out using their graduation date. She's asking if their graduation date is 522, which was uh, the targeted graduation date on our calendars before COVID-19 um, closed our schools or if it will be the day of their virtual graduation. And, and for Allison, your official graduation date will still be May 22nd, 2020. Um, it will not be the date of your virtual graduation. We're just doing the virtual graduation as a, or virtual ceremonies as a way to honor our seniors um, and break it out by day, but your official graduation date will still be May 22nd. And another question regarding uh, graduation regalia. Um, we had graduation regalia pickup days on May uh, 4th and 5th, um, but Chantal on Facebook Live wants to know, how about students that haven't received their senior ring or other regalia? Um, what, what should they do if they're still missing some of that regalia? I'll take, I'll take that, Eric. This is Bob Chenard from Yuma High School. Um, they should reach out to the specific campus and contact the activities um, assistant principal, and we can arrange um, a time for them to come pick up their ring or any any graduation regalia that they need to be picked up. Thank you, Mr. Chenard. And a question for Ms. Anaya. Um, it, it, there was a question about yearbooks for San Luis specifically, but I've seen some others come through um, regarding yearbooks as well. So Ms. Anaya, could you just share uh, what we know about yearbooks and, and how those can be purchased if someone still wanted to, as well as uh, what the status of delivery is on those. Yes, um, so right now, if um, those yearbooks are available through the each of the high school's main webpage through their web store, and um, if the, that web store will tell them if there are still copies available for sale. Um, as far as um, those yearbooks being shipped, I am not familiar with uh, the exact dates for each of the campuses. So my suggestion would be to, again, please call to uh, contact the campus uh, directly, and we'd be happy to answer that question individually. And the last that we had been heard, we had been hearing from a lot of the companies was that the yearbook printing um, was going to be delayed, uh, but they would still honor the orders. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. And the other question that we're seeing a lot about is uh, diplomas. Is there uh, anyone who would like to answer what the situation is uh, regarding uh, distribution of diplomas? Uh, Enzo was nodding. Maybe he wants to jump in. I'll take that one. I, I don't know if you're referring to as a district as a whole. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the district, the principals, we've, we've been talking about when would be the best time to actually have diploma pickup. Um, and I just want to, um, give a shout out to John Perry for helping us out with a couple of our campuses, um, and us diplomas for those students as well at Kofa and Healy Ridge. So thank you, John, for helping us out with that as well. Um, diploma will be awarded, um, with social distancing. Um, and we'll get more information 
probably in the next few days to the community on when those days will be or that day will be. It will not be a replacement. It won't be a graduation. There won't be there won't be pomp and circumstance. It'll be simply coming to the diploma and then leaving campus. But we'll get more information about that as as that plan is finalized. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Brianza. Uh, we got a question from Mauricio on um, Facebook Live. How can students complete their ELP credits online? So I can take that question, Eric. Um, was e how do they complete their ELP credits online? Yes, yep. So yeah, we each campus uh, has students that are currently working in their extended learning program classes, um, whether it's ELP or A plus and they will have uh, up to a certain timeline and, and somebody could correct me on the date, but I think the deadline is May 14th to finish those. But I, I, can, I will say that if somebody is up against that timeline and they need more time, they can always work it out with their teacher and their counselor, um, maybe an extension. We wanna be flexible with these students, so we'll, we'll address it on an, a case-by-case -case basis um, in hopes that they can, they can get those courses done preferably if they're an underclassmen by the 21st at the latest, but we want to try to get them in by the 14th if possible. Thank you, Mr. Bosch. Um, I know we were scheduled to go until seven o'clock tonight, but um, we are uh, completed with our advanced questions, which were some of the makeup questions from our previous event. And uh, the questions in our Facebook comments are slowing down and beginning to sort of be repetitive in a lot of ways. So um, we right now, I think, are going to conclude the event for tonight. Um, again, I think one of the, the biggest lessons is if you have questions about things specifically, especially those related to your, camps, uh, your campuses, uh, please contact the school. Um, your principals are available to answer those questions and provide that, that personal service. Um, and uh, for now, I'm going to pass it to Mr. Brianza for some closing thoughts. Thank you, Eric. Basically, I, I want to thank our panelists for helping out answering um, these great questions. Um, we had a lot of people on Facebook asking questions. We had staff members answering it. We had community members answering questions as well. Um, but as you can tell, a lot of the questions dealt with pickup, drop off of different items, things that would happen during a normal school year. So it's understandable there's a lot of questions out there about how we're gonna handle things in, this, in these unique times that we're in. So just to reiterate what Eric said, um, and the principals as well, and um, the system principals and teachers that were a part of the panel, is contact the school, contact the teacher, um, email the principal um, for specific questions, because they're gonna be able to give you the customer service um, there on the spot. One, one group of, uh, employees that we really haven't um, talked a lot about is our tech department. Our chief uh, information officer, Dean Farr, has put a lot of things in place over the last few years. And one of the things is a system um, called Jabber, not to get in the weeds too much, but it allows our, our employees to answer the phone via their computers, no matter where they're at. So if you call on the school for information, you're, you're gonna get a person. Um, and that person is gonna find out the answer for you. So if you're having a difficult time getting in touch with a person um, to find out an answer, email the principal. But we've, we've come a long way with technology and it's there to support our work every day. And we wanna make sure that we can make sure the students and our stakeholders um, can have the, their answers and be taken care of. So once again, thank you for joining us tonight and I'll give it back to you, Eric. Well, that uh, is, everything I think that uh, I would have said and more. So thank you, Mr. Brianza for closing things out. Um, on behalf of our panelists and, and everybody really participating tonight and in our, our comment section, uh, I, I feel like this was very helpful. And uh, again, thank you everybody for joining us. And if you have questions, additionally, please contact your school. Um, have a, a great evening and uh, We'll see you back on Facebook next week for some of these virtual recognition ceremonies. Bye-bye.